But let's, let's talk about your article, Alan. We have this story from Breitbart. Legion of Doom. 26 leftist NGOs team up to stop Elon Musk from changing Twitter. Alan, what's this all about? So the left, as you all know, have been freaking out nonstop for the past uh, two or three weeks because of Elon Musk, who calls himself a free speech absolutist, and his plans to bring free speech absolutism back to Twitter, which is the correct way of explaining it. Free speech was originally an ideal of Twitter. Uh, they changed that. Elon Musk wants to take them back to their roots. What is this? And they who, can't let that happen because... Who's this, who's this old guy? Uh, I've never seen that guy before. Who is he? That's a good question. He looks familiar. That's, uh, yeah, that's uh, old Jack George. Jack Dorsey? <laughs> Jack Dorsey. That's the old CEO of Twitter? He's not aged. Jack oh, that's, Dorsey. That's, uh, is that Trump's dad? That's Luke Rutkowski. That is oh, Jorge. Yeah. This is... Uh, Soros. George Soros, that's Jorge right. Soros. Wait, are we allowed to say that? I thought that was like an anti-Semitic yeah, thing no, to even say his name say out his loud. Name. George Soros yeah, yeah. is allowed remember, to be re- said. Yeah, remember yeah. when um, Newt Gingrich, I think it was, who was it? They mentioned George Soros on Fox, and Fox was like, Shut no. Yeah. And he was like, what? He said George Soros was funding DAs. I'm like, no, no, we don't talk about that. And he was like, but he is. <laughs> like, what? I don't understand. Like, it's not a secret. Yeah, so, so he's funding a lot of these organizations. Is that what's going on? He is. Uh, so are some foreign governments. What? So uh, yes. some foreign governments are funding these organizations. Uh, the government of Sweden, the government of Canada, Denmark, uh, the Netherlands. Foreign interference That's in our right. elections? Yep. Indeed. Heavens! Foreign manipulation of social media. I can't media. believe this. There's no way the left would be that hypocritical. Next, you're, tell- you're going to tell me that the left is advocating for using horse medicine to induce abortions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, they are. <laughs> this is you part of why. You can't make it up. When I think people's obsession, <laughs> maybe not obsession with nationalism, but like adherence to nationalism worries me because it's like, let's be realistic. We're on a global stage now. Everything is global. There is no more. I mean, there is still a United States Constitution, but the United States is permeable. Everything is here. We're all interacting with each other at this point. This so- is... This is literally what Jack Dorsey was saying on, on Rogan. He was like, well, we're making rules for, a, I think it was actually Vijaya. We're making rules for a global community. And I'm like, this is America. This is America. We got American law here. You don't silence someone for some, some other country. What are you talking about? Yeah. And that's, that's all Elon Musk has said. He said he uh, wants free speech on Twitter to go as far as the law and no further. That's and, a very reasonable position. And he said people can change the law. He's like, if they don't like it, they, gotta change, they can change the law. You can. Well, you remember when uh, when there was a debate as to whether this acquisition would take place, uh, Saudi Prince came out and said, yeah. you know, they had a huge stake in Twitter. And they were like, absolutely not. The reason is because they need to be able to censor their own citizens and, and oh, their yeah. own citizens are using Twitter. I love this. Take a look at this. The full list includes free press. Ah, yes, the free what? press. <laughs> yeah. um, you may remember them from such campaigns like stop people from having free press. Yeah. <laughs> what? Is this freepress.net? Classic. Is that who that is? I think it's the same one, yeah. Because I want to give a shout out to freepress.net because I know some of the people who used to work there. And I remember, you know, back during Occupy when they were very much like free press, free speech until Donald Trump got elected. And then they were like, we should ban speech. Mm -hmm. And I I remember talking to this guy and I was like, dude, how? Like I, I, I had hung out with him. And then a few months later, he was advocating for banning Alex Jones. And then I was like, I thought you were the free press. And he was like, but this is hate speech. I'm like, when did you guys start deciding that certain things weren't free press anymore? Like, I don't, I don't get it, dude. I, I pulled up their organization on the Wayback Machine and it was like, we believe in free speech and the free press. And then you look at some point, all of a sudden it's like diversity and equity are our core values. And I'm like, that's not free press. Right. You know, they lost it. You, you go back and you look at the way the left and the liberals used to write about Twitter, used to write about social media. They used to praise them for free speech. They used to praise them for opening up communications, for democratizing the news until Trump wins. Yeah, Trump It's all great until Trump yeah. wins. And that's so weird. There's and they realized and they realized how much institutional power they have and they realized, hey, you know, we can prevent Trump from winning again. Mm. Let's exert it. And now they're just full blown left fascists. I mean that's just D- where they They fall. even used to praise data mining for elections. There's this fantastic article, maybe we can pull it up. It's called you, you can you can probably Google it, you'll find it. It's called Obama, Facebook and the Power of Friendship. Oh my. This is the way they were writing about the way Facebook data was used in 2012. From The Guardian? Yes. <laughs> Obama, Facebook, and the power of friendship. The power the of friendship. 2020 data election. But then Donald Trump did the same thing. Actually, I don't even think he did. I, I, do, I do think, because I read a lot about the Cambridge stuff. Yeah, no, he did far less than this. I think it's Fa- all, all BS. Facebook gave the Obama campaign their entire social graph. 
like Cambridge Analytica was nothing compared to what Facebook did in 2012. And I think a lot of what, I think they overhype what Cambridge was actually doing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because like they can't, you know, whatever, let them lose. Yeah. These, these are people who can't admit to themselves that they suck. And so it's like they're at a party. They've got, you know, dog crap all over their boots and no one will go near them. And they're like, it's because I'm too cool. Huh. You know, the, the real problem is <laughs> Russia. Russia's telling everybody not to hang out with me. Dude, Russia's so lame. That's what they're doing. It's like, no, you suck. Hillary was terrible. Why would you run Hillary Clinton? And they did. And it's funny because, yo, if they picked literally anybody else, Trump would not have won. Like, they went with one of the least popular persons. Yeah, Bernie people. Sanders would have beat him for sure. Yeah. I definitely think Bernie Sanders would have won. But I think they could have found, like, you could have taken any any moderate Democrat. Probably, probably. could take Joe Biden. Probably be, it would have That's been true. 2016. But I guess yeah. because of his son is why he didn't run. That's, they, they, they had planned for Joe Biden to run. Oh. But Hillary that, was just next in line. She was yep. going to get it. She was not going to have That's any very problems. regime. And like, it, yeah. Anyone who got in her way, you know. That's crazy. <laughs> Meta metaphorically, <laughs> metaphorically, of course. The DNC yeah. just chooses the candidate. Like, the that's best really meme. crazy. Yeah, did the you, super did, delegates and all that. I mean, that's what they did. Did you guys like, see the meme? The Twitter account, Roe v. Wade, says, I have information that will lead yeah. to the arrest and prosecution <laughs> of Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Amazing. Uh -huh. Anything gets canceled, shut down, ends. Like a, a burger shop can go out of business and someone will make a meme about yeah. Hillary Clinton. I think what, what gets me about this, what, and I think, think I'm trying to see that point of view, the other point of view here, is that Trump can go on stage and be like, the sky is not blue. The sky is red. This, I heard the sky is red. And then a bunch of people will go online and they'll be like, the sky actually is red. No, and wait, people will be like, okay, there are such things as cult worshipers that believe anything, even if it's not real, when they hear it from their cultist, when they're cult. So people are afraid of that and they want to censor it. I think That's, of it backwards. I think he's a very powerful speaker and people believe Donald him at Trump his word. reads a story about some potential medications that was published in TechCrunch. Because I know, because I read the news. Two days later, Donald Trump goes, did you hear the news about this thing? It's, it sounds very great. There's a, a medication. We're, we're, we're very excited for this. And then the media all of a sudden flips and is like, no, it's all bad. Donald Trump is dangerous. And I'm like, but you reported on these studies. Donald Trump had a tendency of watching cable TV, putting too much stock in these institutional news outlets because he kept giving them interviews, believing them. But then the next day, they'd be like, uh, actually, the thing we said yesterday is gone. Here's a good example. Politico reported that Ukraine meddled in the 2016 yeah. election. And then when Donald Trump and Trump supporters started complaining about it, Politico then reported that Ukraine did not meddle in the... I'm like, good stuff. Are, have you retracted the initial report yet? No. Okay, you know what, man? And so that's actually, you know, to your point, I think what's happening in reverse. We can point this out, that Politico, you know, basically made something up. And we're able to do that in the digital public square and correct people and help them come to the truth. And so with your point, if, if this was a good faith argument that they were making, it's actually better for them to say the sky is red out in the public square because we'll be able to correct them and guide them to where the truth is. Unfortunately, what they're doing is they're, they're suppressing it. And so you're going to have two Americas. Yeah, it's and a, that's oh, where it's an overreaction. Let's just let, let's just let's just uh, look, this. But it could very well because be an I intentional know, overreaction. Because I know there are many people who want to share this show and share the show with people who are not initiated in the past several years of politics. Here is an article from Politico in 27, uh, January of 2017 from Ken Vogel and David Stern. Ukrainian efforts to sabotage Trump backfire. Huh. Ukrainian government officials tried to help Hillary Clinton and undermine Trump by publicly questioning his fitness for office. They also disseminated documents implicating a top Trump aide in corruption and suggested they were investigating the matter only to back away after the election. And they helped Clinton allies research damaging information on Trump and his advisors. A Politico investigation found they this never is, retracted this. This is damning evidence. This is a story that came out still there. right after the election that is still there that has never been retracted. But yes, Politico and every other outlet came out. I, my, my favorite moment. Shout out David Pakman when he did a segment about meet the press asking Ted Cruz, do you think Ukraine meddled in the election? And Ted's like. It was reported by Politico and like NBC. And then a guy in the background starts laughing. So like it's super unprofessional. And Pac-Man is like, wow, they're laughing at him. And I'm like, David, did you Google the story? He, they don't do it. They live in crackpot fake news reality where I can at least say this. Maybe Ukraine did not meddle in the election. Maybe. 
But Politico's reported both they did and they didn't. I mean, so you tell me what's true. I, I bet they all did. At this point, it's a global game, and the United States is the leader. So everyone involved, everyone's involved that possibly can Yeah, be. but it's, it's good if there's global meddling to help the Democrats. It's only right, yeah. bad if it helps the Republicans. Um, I mean, that's their perspective, like, honestly. One thing that irks me about what you just said, Tim, is that you said, did they Google it? And we're talking about censorship and who controls the gateway of what you can see at Google. Yeah. So, like, did you Google it? Does it even matter if Google can decide what's going to be on the Google search results? I don't like using Google's verb. Yeah. Think of it as a company that has a search algorithm that is very hidden from view. I use Brave as my search. Well, hmm. the fact well, is that people don't do the barest amount of research before they talk about anything, including this. So someone like David Pakman can just be like, oh, my gosh, they're laughing at him. That must mean it's crazy, right? No, it's actually not. And if you looked into it, you'd know it. It's so so, like one of the first things you said. To say. wrap up what I was saying, Trump will say something, whether it's true or not, people and then people may or may not believe it. They're afraid that the cultists will believe him at face value and that's dangerous. So they try and suppress it. But I think also that there's like Trump wasn't part of the liberal economic order. He didn't want American military supremacy all over the earth and they didn't like that. So now they're going far beyond like, hey, this guy's dangerously corrupting people too. This guy's impeding our agenda, so let's make sure that we smash him in the press. That's the vibe I'm getting from it. And uh, I'm tired of it. So we're building decentralized free software, which will be AGPL, where you can run your own network and have your own server and interact with other people using the software, try and bypass this stuff. I'm still concerned with Verizon having ISPs and things like that. we got to figure out a way to like use decentralized tech like Noster, N-O-S-T-R, stuff like that where we don't need an internet to interact with each other. It's all meshed web stuff. Yeah. Look at this, look at this, Politico. Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. When Russian disinformation met a Trump obsession, the Kremlin may have been laying the groundwork for blaming Ukraine for 2016 as early as 2015. Oh my gosh. What, are you crazy? Three weeks after election day 2016, the Kremlin, Kremlin officially floated a theory that would ultimately lead to only the third presidential impeachment in U.S. history. Ukraine seriously complicated the work of Trump's election by planting information aimed at damaging his campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, a spokesman for Russians, Russia's foreign ministry, told reporters on November 30th, 2016, accusing the Ukrainian government of scheming to help elect Hillary Clinton. This is the Euro Maidan. Just, just fascinating. Just so fascinating that Politico reported that Politico was Russian disinformation. Okay. Okay. So look, I'll say this. Maybe it is. Maybe Politico really is Russian disinformation. Maybe. Good job, Politico. Why did you not retract the initial article then? If you're going to publish a story claiming it was Russian disinformation that Ukraine meddled, retract your own story and apologize. You are fake news. Fake news. This is also concerning because there was the government, basically there was a revolution in the Ukraine in 2014, you know, the, the, I don't know if the CIA was involved in it, but that's what I, I've heard that a bunch. I, I can't verify 100% backed by Western, uh, Western intelligence. Like, I, I don't think that's even in dispute anymore. And my, so my, if that's the government that was meddling to keep Trump out of office, it doesn't surprise me. My thing about the whole Ukraine war right now is the U.S. and the West was using soft power to win over Ukraine. That's what they were doing. It's better than kinetic warfare. Russia mm -hmm. is being terrible at what they do and not understanding how to compete in fourth and fifth, genera fifth, genera fifth generational warfare decides just going with bombs and tanks, killing people and destroying a country. So I don't like what the U.S. was doing when they do these, these manipulation campaigns. But I think the reality of the world is that everything is influence peddling. China's going for the, you know, the, the, was it the Belt and Road Initiative or whatever. They're going and they're offering money. The U.S. going to Ukraine and be like, we're going to give you a billion dollars. We're going to give you all this stuff. Get us what we want. I'm like, okay, welcome to global politics. Joe Biden going in and being like, fire the prosecutor or you're not getting the billion dollars. Joe Biden should be in prison for that. But, you know, I think Russia's wrong. It to seems like the liberal economic order is the Borg and that the Russian Confederation Federation is the Klingons. Like, they're just brute, brute force. Yeah, know? the Ru Russian soft power, like, really is pitiful compared to the U.S. All these myths about, you know, the KGB and their, uh, you know, in, in, insane covert abilities. I mean, they weren't able to stop a coup happening on a country right in their border. Uh, U.S. soft power really is unparalleled. Yeah. Even compared to China's, I would say. Although China's catching up. It's, it's, it's tough because... Yeah, I don't like war. I don't like uh, uh, conflict and violence and bombs and nukes and all that stuff. But if, if it's like if the line is that the U.S. goes to countries and they're like, we're going to give you a bunch of money to side with us. I'm like, isn't that better in terms of global interests to like at least 
sort of trade kind of you get look at the economic the confessions of an economic hitman he wrote about that they come in and they offer money and then it, but if you say no that's when the problem begins because then the, they're like okay now this, we got to send this in my point. the jackals well, here's the thing with ukraine though you're kind of asking for trouble if you do that to a country on the borders of a great power estonia and latvia are nato countries on the border of russia i think the issue is that russia needs the warm water port with uh, with crimea and so that's a big issue for Russia. The U.S. is encroaching, and I think Russia is one of the next dominoes to fall. So Russia probably tolerated Estonia and Latvia. With Ukraine, they were like, Ukraine goes in 20 years, we go. You take a look at what happened with those Instagrammers from Russia crying, no, don't ban me. Russia already lost the culture war. Or I should say they're losing it, and now they're trying to reverse it. But man, are they late. Their, their children were being indoctrinated by Western social media. And so they were freaking out when Russia declared this war. I'm telling you, man, the difference between boomers and uh, even millennials and down, this gap in Internet usage, people like Putin and his advisors, his top military guys, they don't understand the, the cultural and mental worldview difference they have from their kids because their kids weren't raised by them. Mm -hmm. Their kids were raised by the Internet and they were being raised by Facebook, face CIA book, as the activists like to call it. So what happens after Vladimir Putin ages out, as it were? You can't spell this, facial without CIA. This is one of the big reasons why the establishment was praising Facebook and Twitter and social media for their free speech before Trump. Mm -hmm. Because I there was there was a, uh, a chap who worked in the Trump administration, an appointee, uh, I won't name him, who said uh, the, uh, and this was like, he follows for, the, for, the foreign policy part of the deep state very closely. He said, um, the U.S. establishment, the defense establishment liked social media because it helped them do regime change abroad. But then with 2016 and Brexit, they realized, oh, no, can regime change the West? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's you know, what I'm they, wondering. It's like it's like we're in an avalanche, this whole globalizing <clears throat> Internet culture. And how what do we, we can't stop the avalanche? I mean, I can't fathom that. So we just got to ski the avalanche. I mean, at this point, build technology like yeah. open source free software. And it's, it's hard even for companies like Google and Twitter and Facebook uh, to do it because they these are all started as open platforms. So you still can find articles and your videos debunking this Politico stuff if with enough creative Google searches. You could find it on Twitter going viral. Uh, they, they haven't been able to censor these, these uh, platforms completely because these platforms were not made to be censored. Which, they by the way, is platforms. why the left is furious with them. I mean, yeah. the left wants total control here. That's where, you know, as much from the right, we see big tech as being censorious and terrible and all that, and they have been. The left wants them to double down, triple down. Mm. I mean, it's absolutely insane. I mean, you know, my entire job is is exposing big tech. But if we're talking about the uh, the regime, big tech is not entirely a reluctant partner, but they have they they were pressured into it to to a large degree by external forces, especially the media. And this is why we see these twenty six organizations coming and saying we need an advertiser boycott of Twitter because that's their leverage over the tech companies. Ultimately, that's how they get them to do things. Yeah, you know what? Elon Musk was trying to get away from ads anyway. Uh, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's thought about this. Mm -hmm. He wants to do a subscription membership model. He wants to charge for premium access, and I think it's a brilliant idea. And I, I will, I'll be totally honest. Uh, I got uh, a lot of followers on Twitter. If they came to me and said, we've got a premium suite, I'd be like, done. Yes. Yeah, show, show, show me like, show me data on, uh, there's like, there's the, the analytics sucks for Twitter. Give me like a premium analytics suite. I don't, I don't care about Twitter because you can't use it the way you can use, say, YouTube. YouTube tells me, here's how many people watched your video in the first hour. Here's how many people, like how long they watched your first video. And I'm like, oh, okay. So here's what they like. And here's what they don't like. Twitter is like, Say something and cross your fingers. Mm -hmm. If they actually came out and said for X amount of dollars, we'll do this for you. I think they should be verifying everybody. I think, you know, I, I guess Elon Musk said he wants what, like two bucks, um, two bucks per month for Twitter blue. And then they'll verify you, they'll, your identity and all that stuff. Not everyone has to be identif uh, identified. Not everybody has to be verified. People will still be able to use it for free. And I'm like, I think he's got a good plan for this. So. And he's, he's so smart. I mean, I, I know he made comments about. This isn't about economics, which is great. Like, I'm glad that he's doing this for, for free speech, but he's too smart for that. Like, he knows that he paid $44 billion. He's got Web3 ideas. He's got decentralization ideas. He's got all sorts of mm. things. I, well, I'm, not, sure, no. I'm sure he will turn this into a trillion-dollar company. I would bet my this, bet everything. I'm, I'm not sure he has Web3 ideas. He, uh, yeah. he constantly uh, constantly dunks on Web3 projects, uh, which, which, to be fair, a lot of them are a bit 
bad. Uh, bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Hive and the recovery of the Steam network. You I know, think Elon in this situation is a student. He's been the master at all his other companies because he started them. This one he bought. So he's here to learn. How cool would it be if after Elon buys Twitter, one day everyone wakes up and when they log in, they just see when they log into their account, it's just GeoCities. <laughs> and there's like just like the banana yeah. guy, the peanut butter jelly time, you know, GIFs and all that stuff. And people are like, wait, what's going on? And Elon's like, the internet was better back when we just did it this way. So now Twitter is this. And it's like, just. You're you know, reminding me of uh, YTMNDs. Remember those? I remember oh, yeah. those. <laughs> oh, those, were, those were 4chan before 4chan. That, that was, was amazing. Great. You guys, you're, you guys ever go on Newgrounds? Oh, yeah. yeah. Back yeah. in the day. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Newgrounds.com, for those that don't know, was YouTube before YouTube existed. And they missed the train. They Big had, time. They, yeah, they had flash video because they, they were cartoon oriented. And so what happened was, I could be totally wrong about this. Um, I used to, I was on Newgrounds every day looking at every new submission. These were, people were uploading cartoons because I used to do flash animation stuff. And then I remember when YouTube came around and then all of a sudden the animators started putting their stuff on YouTube because it was just easy and fast. Newgrounds could have done video. In fact, they had some video sometimes, but I, I guess they thought, no, 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 we're an animator community. So we're going to stick to that. And then everyone migrated their animations to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And that was... And they probably thought they were, th they were so big they didn't see the threat coming. But, it's, uh. but the crazy thing is they were so big, but nowhere near as big as YouTube came to be. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember the ultimate showdown? I was, I was oh, like... Oh, of course, dude. I was nine. I thought that was the funniest shit ever. <laughs> Imagine if right now we were streaming, not on YouTube, but on Newgrounds. Because they, they had... Flash player, they they could have done video. Mm -hmm. Imagine if they built out that infrastructure, we'd be in a very different place. Yeah. I wonder what, what what they would do because a lot of the content they posted is just adult humor, like not for kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could Good you website. comment on videos on Newgrounds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, the, YouTube had those video responses, which really enlivened the community before Google bought them. I wonder if Google was planning on buying them before that, or if they were like, "Whoa, there's a community here, and we want to build community, so we're going to buy it." Mm -hmm. But they bought it for a billion, and and YouTube was dying. Was like. They couldn't pay for their, their infrastructure, so they had to sell the company. That's what it, what it came to. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.